Unity Christian Center, Unity Christian Church, Fayetteville, North Carolina. We are so happy to be with you again. And our message is talking about our favorite subject, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God's favorite subject because God used him to deliver mankind through all types of universities and, and forevermore. Right now, man is not looking to God or looking to Jesus to save him, but God is not taken by surprise because of pandemics, earthquakes, floods, all those things have already been included in his plan for man. Not only that, our God don't have to worry about situations because he has control of all situations. You know, when you have authority and control of all situations, then you don't have to worry about a situation that you are in control of. We worry, we tend to worry about things we can't control. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the thing you don't need to worry about. Those, those things you can't control, you don't need to worry about because you can't control them anyway. Well, I want to start by talking to you. We can't talk to you about Jesus without talking to you about the angels and his placement in the spiritual realm. And uh, so I'll start with Michael. And we see in Daniel chapter 10, verse 21, Daniel 12 and 1, Daniel 7 and 12, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, Jude 9, we're talking about a, a Michael coming in contact with man doing God's bidding. So Michael is one of the archangels who serve God. In scripture, he is presented as being above all other angels. He seems to be the prime administrator of God. He is also pictured as a guardian angel of God's people. We know he protects Israel, and we know when Michael stands up, then Israel can stand down. Uh, he struggles against the fallen angels who seek control over nations and people of the earth. So what are we talking about? We're talking about something that you will not hear on uh, CNN. Or you will not hear it on Fox because this is the invisible kingdom. This is a kingdom in which man, even though he's about to put another multi-billion dollar satellite uh, telescope in the sky, will not see one angel. The only way these angels are manifested is if God may be seen by you. Other than that, when you look at a planet, it looks like it's barren. When you look out to see angels, you might see what pilots call light. They know something's out there, they just don't know what it is. But God has told us what it is in the scriptures. Scripture teaches us that there are ranks and orders of angels, that there are various levels of authority among angels, that uh, they rule as principalities, as powers over the spiritual world. This is a true, true among both good and bad angels. So what are bad angels? Bad angels are those that's under the control of Satan that would do anything he can to destroy mankind. So these are the bad angels. So we have good angels. And thank God that the good angels are under God's control. Because we find if we leave him under man's control, man don't do a good enough job on protecting himself, let alone trying to order the angels around. Amen. Man has been given authority over demons. And you know how well that's gone. Demons are everywhere. <laughs> demons are our, our number one problem. And we act as though they don't even exist. Yet God, when Christ was ascended, he was given all power and he gave it to the church over demon forces. So we're going to talk about that. So I am, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature 
shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we see that in Christ Jesus, there's nothing that can separate you from God's uh, love through Christ Jesus because everything God did to bring you to him was through Christ Jesus. There's no way that you can be separated from him unless you willingly uh, do it. And, and, and that's going to be hard to do for a person that knows God. Christ is far above all principalities, his powers and might and dominions in every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that world which is to come. That's Ephesians 1 and 21. Now we have uh, in, it said what we have to do with, uh, uh, this is uh, Mark chapter 5 Mark chapter 5 we see it says the demons are talking to Jesus he said what have we to do with thee thou Jesus of Nazareth art thou come to destroy us say art thou come to destroy us Jesus of Nazareth the demons knew who he was now isn't it amazing that demons knew who Christ was or who he is Angels know who Christ is, but yet mankind still don't know who he is and still don't understand that the biggest fear and the biggest thing that they're going to have to deal with is not the pandemic, but the uh, condemnation that's coming on the world through not receiving the Son of God, not taking the rescue that God has provided for man. Demons know Jesus to be the Holy One of God, as well as they know their fate to be one of torment and sin. So demons know Jesus. Now demons know Jesus, and what we're attempting to do in this church at every chance I get is to teach people who Jesus is so that we will not abandon him, desert him, by therefore forfeiting our own salvation. So it says, um, demons knew Jesus to be the Holy One of God, as well as they know their fate to be one of torment and uh, uh, for their sins. They also know the time of their torment, implying knowledge of God's eternal plan. That's in Luke 4, 34, 8, 28, and Matthew 8, 29. Now I'm going to start with Luke. It says, uh, go away. This is Luke uh, chapter 4, verse 34. Go away. We want nothing to do with you, Jesus from Nazareth. You have come to destroy us. These are demon spirits talking to Jesus. Go away. We want nothing to do with you, Jesus from Nazareth. You have come to destroy us. I know, it uh, says, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. So they knew him to be the Holy One of God. In verse 35, Jesus cut them short. By, and he said, be silent. He told the demons, come out. The demons threw the man to the floor as the crowd watched. Then left him without hurting him any further. So we see it's a spiritual world. It's a spiritual rim in which... The only remedy for the spiritual realm and for man to be delivered from this wicked world, fallen angels and demons that occupy man's flesh is through Jesus Christ and the authority that Jesus given to the church. So if the church is not fighting the demons, yet the angels are still fighting bad angels. And the church is not, uh, it was one period of time the church want to call everything, they said everything is a demon. Well. Everything is a demon. If you got a hundred pounds of flesh on your body and you don't have a spirit of gluttony, you might, but this flesh is eating, taking all your nourishment, you got to take medicine, taking your blood supply, and it's on your body. I call that a demon. I call it one in me. 
when you, we see church folk, we go around and we gain the weight and we think it's nothing. But you take away the spirit, you take away the appetite. Everything is the same thing with lust or the same thing with alcohol. That alcohol demon can be taken out of a person. Yeah, that person may have a craving for the alcohol through their flesh, but if that spirit leaves, if that spirit leaves, then they have a chance to fight that spirit. Same thing with, we, you know, you could not spend enough time on a treadmill or walking to compensate for what this, this spirit will do to you. Because first of all, it's going to try to get you to eat the food, the wrong food. People don't look at it in the spirit. I look at everything. If there's a thousand spirits, look, what this, look what, what this spirit said. Go away. We want nothing to do with you, Jesus, from Nazareth. They knew who he was, where he was from. You have come to destroy us. That's exactly what demons need to be, destroyed. I know who you are, the Holy Son of God. They knew he was the Son of God, the Holy Son of God. Jesus cut him short. Be silent. He told the demons, come out. The demons threw the man to the floor. So the demons had control of the man as a crowd watch and then left him without hurting him any further. Now what we see here is the neglect of us who has been uh, given authority over demon spirits. And these demon spirits come in the form of, of sickness. Come in the form of disease. They come in the form of drug spirits. They, everywhere we look, we have a job to do, and they come but to kill, steal, and destroy. But through Christ, He said, "I've come that you might have life, and have that life more abundantly." In Matthew eight and twenty-eight. It said, when they arrived on the other side of the lake in the country of the Gatherings, two men with demons in them met him. So Jesus and his disciples arrived, and when they arrived at the country of the Gatherings, two men with demons in them met him. Two men. So don't think that demons won't try you. They will. He said, two men with demons met him. They lived in a cemetery and were so dangerous that no one could go uh, through that area. They began screaming at him, what do you want with us, O son of God? You have no right to torment us uh, yet. They said, you have no right to torment us yet implying that they knew the time that hell was made for them. Hell was made for them. And one day they will go there, but they, they had no right, they had no, they knew they, some kind of way this plan had gone wrong. They didn't understand that Jesus came to establish the church, which is us, that would torment these demons. Mm -hmm. But what we want to do is spiritualize and say, well, you want to call everything a demon. Well. If it's compulsive, if it's making your life miserable, miserable, if it's making you take medicine, look at the different people in the church that has to have body parts amputated. Look at the people in that church that has to have medication because some part of their body has stopped functioning. Look at the different people that as you get older, these spirits try to, to invade your body and your flesh. And look at the good that it does through laying on of hands and through prayer and through trust in God, and through fasting. So it says, uh, it says, they began screaming at him, what do you want with us, O son of God? Have you, you have no right to torment us yet. A herd of pigs was feeding in a distance. So the demons begged, if you cast us out, send us into the herd of pigs. Now, how long has the church known about this? How long has this been common knowledge to the church that the demons would rather be cast into animals rather than cast into a dry place, rather than go someplace else? They would rather be cast into animals. How many people realize that Christ had the power to cast these?
demons out of a man to make them leave his body. How long have we known this? Yet, when it comes to acknowledging these spirits and understanding what they've done to us and our family and our loved ones, our bodies, like I said, if it's tormenting, oppressive, oppression is a spirit. Have you noticed that these men, when they were in, in the graveyard, what were they doing? They were cutting themselves. Yeah. And have you ever noticed these teenage girls, if you look at all over the country, see, they want to get a consensus on everything that they that's popular to them. They don't want to do, get a consensus on anything that would uh, cause them to uh, gain the knowledge. When teenage girls cut themselves and constantly cut themselves and cut themselves, that's a form of demonic, a demonic spirit. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what, what's going on there. We've seen these kids in, 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 in the schools acting out, not just cutting themselves, but drinking blood. Why do people love evil? Because they don't know how bad it is. They don't know. They would rather seek after uh, Satan and uh, his unrighteousness and uh, realize who Jesus really is. I think sometimes if we let people know who he is, that they will understand that Jesus is the savior of the world. He is the one that was, Isaiah said uh, to us, a sign will be given, a child will be born. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace. And he would come into the world. So I think that that uh, if we told people who Christ was and who he is and that he was just not a man that was born in Galilee at that particular time, but he was destined to be there 4,000 years, prophesied before he came in the world. And when he came into the world, the Bible said the fullness of time, he came in to put man above demons, to put man back on the track. God had already uh, established a relationship with angels and men where angels would be protecting uh, God's people and fighting uh, uh, bad angels, even in the book of Daniel in the Old Testament. So God is doing his part, but men have the authority and we need that part. It says, verse 30, you say, all right, Jesus told them, be gone. And they came out of the man and entered the pigs and the whole herd rushed over a cliff and drown in the water below. So the pigs would rather drown than the curse of demons, and we don't eat pork. <laughs> Maybe that's what we ought to eat. They're the ones that went and drowned themselves rather than have some demons. Maybe some of these people that don't eat pork need to read that story and go eat some pork because they're probably full of demons. And the demons, the pig, the pig, the pigs would probably say, I'm glad they don't eat us. They got too many demons in them. They, they look at pork, they don't even know why they don't eat it. And they don't eat it as a form of being clean. Food does not make you clean or uh, unclean. What goes in the body it does, not, does defile not defile the body. What, what comes, comes out. out of the body defiles the body. Amen. Demon spirits that live in the body can defile the body. And they don't have to come in your body because you eat pork or don't eat pork. It's, a, uh, it's amazing how people can grow up and, 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 and they honor Ramadan and some of the different movements that surround the world. They have no idea what they mean, what they represent. Anything that's not built off of truth, anything that's not established with truth. Truth is hard to find, but if you seek it, you'll find it. It's like silver. It's like gold. It's precious. It's like wisdom that comes directly from God. And truth has to have a beginning. Because a lie can have a beginning that can start right here on earth. Amen. But truth starts with God. Amen. The Bible calls him the way, the truth, the truth and the life. And the life. Amen. Those are, it's a lot of people in church that's half-hearted. And, then, and, then, and it's not putting them down. Then it's hard to motivate yourself when you are friends with the world. When the world tell you when to eat, when to get up, when to go to work, how to think how to raise your kids, and God at the same time telling you how to raise your kids, but you want to be like the world because you don't want to be an unpopular participant or parent. And then when your kids get grown, they look at you and they say, well, you can go for that Christian stuff, but uh, for me, I'd rather not eat pork. 
You don't bring me no pork. I ain't eating no pork. I come to your house, but I ain't eating no pork. And you like, what is your problem? What is your problem? Paul said Peter was a uh, had a vision, yeah. and God told Peter, He said, I want you to eat what's on this tray. And Peter said, Lord, I I can't eat that. Pork is on that tray. Every unclean animals uh, parts on that tray. And God told Peter, He said, Don't call unclean what I've clean. And Peter said, Yes, Lord, because Peter was obedient. So Peter understood. Then God sent Peter to Cornelius' house to baptize him and to introduce the Holy Spirit to Peter to talk to him about Christ. And when uh, Paul, uh, when Peter, I mean, when uh, Peter went there uh, to the centurion's house, the, they were already waiting for him, and immediately the man was converted. See, God is doing a work. If God had relied just on the church to do the work, you better believe it, it wouldn't get done. Because no. the church is about, uh, a lot of times we're about uh, how we look, how we dress, how we feel. Uh, whether somebody looked at us hard or spoke to us in a different voice, a, a different voice, whether or not the preacher told us the truth because some tragedies came in life. Tragedies are going to come. There's nothing that can happen in a life that God has not already told you what would happen. God has not promised you something wouldn't happen to you that has happened. Anybody that told you that God said something would not happen that's happened to you is a lie because God don't lie. Amen. God has not done away with death. Death has not been done away with. God has, God has not uh, done away with sin. He has not come done away with sin. Why hasn't God done away with sin? The reason God has not done away with sin is because in order to do away with sin, he's got to do away with Satan. In order for Amen. Satan to be done away with, man has to complete his trials and testing in this world under Satan. As head. Man gave dominion to Satan. Satan causes man, man to sin. And the people that have not sinned have turned their back on Satan, entered into the kingdom of God, and called on Lord of Lord and the King of Kings. And so they are no longer called sinners. They've been bought with a price. They've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. So what we have to understand is when we serve God, we are the priests of that home. When we serve God, we are the head. There's nobody else is going to come in our home that have any more influence over our children than we do. I remember I used to go home. <laughs> I used to go to Baltimore. My father would tell me his problem for about 25, 30 minutes. He's a preacher, right? I was no preacher then. I'm looking at, this is your house. <laughs> I can't do nothing about your, your problems. <laughs> I certainly not only want to know. So uh, I'm just telling you that when people have problems, you can't tell it to people. You gotta go to God and you gotta solve your you gotta solve these problems. People can't solve your problems in your house unless they got your your tax bill. <laughs> when their name is on your tax bill, then they got a right to come in your house. And solve your problem. Other than that, you better get up and do what you got to do, because Satan is coming to wipe out everything that you brought your kids up for. Amen. But guess what? When you got them strong, old mothers in the church that said, "No, not in my house." Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's old fashioned, but not in my house. I remember once when I wasn't saved, I tried to get some things. My brother was coming and with his girlfriend. I oh, you can stay at my house. I almost had to leave the house. But not have it. I said, I didn't understand it then. There's a lot of people don't. You have to keep your house clean. It's people right now that's got dragons. <laughs> dragons in their house. You know, uh, uh, this uh, Derek Prince said that his grandfather had given him these uh, pictures of dragons, real beautiful dragons, and he loved them, and they were Chinese culture, and he kept them. And one day the Lord spoke to him and said, uh, yeah, what does dragon represent? I said, uh, represents Satan. He said, well, 
that right there is something that you need to remove from my house. He said, what? He got to thinking about it. He said, well, it does not represent anything good. I don't know what it represents. He said, but immediately when I removed those things from my house, I started getting blessed. My income doubled. He said, every, my whole ministry changed. People don't want to hear this. We are tied to spiritual blessings and curses. This, if, if you curse a thing, how do you curse a thing? Well, Jesus cursed this fig tree. Jesus cursed this fig tree. And what did he do when he cursed it? And why did he curse it? He cursed the fig tree because it had no, no fruit. fruit. Now, what happened when he cursed it? What happened when you cursed? And when he cursed the fig tree, let me tell you what happened. The sun shined, but it didn't affect the fig tree anymore. The water went to the roots, but it couldn't use the water no more. Everything that fig tree needed to survive, Jesus said, I cut it off because I have authority over these things. Same thing when these our Christians come into church and we got a hundred pounds of fat sitting up on us trying to take take away our dignity, take away our life, uh, shorten our blood going to our feet. Get, ha we got to have medication just for this stuff to hang around. I've been thinking about this for a long time. We got medication when it's fat to lay on our body. It don't do anything but get another pocket. I call it side pockets. Get another pocket where it can just rest on our body and soak up the energy the nutrients and the things that God give us to keep our body working and going forth, it's laying there sucking up everything in our body. And I said, no, I'm not so. It's a demon spirit. Now, now you get rid of the spirit. That why is it that when a Christian, when we come in church, all of a sudden we gain weight? Because we don't do so many other things that people do. Well, eating, we have to watch what we eat. And we have to make sure that that spirit in the flesh is not a spirit that will cause us to leave this earth before our time because of uh, ill will. But as I said, if Jesus could cut off a fig tree with a, with a word, he cursed a fig tree, and in 24 hours, that fig tree was dead. Now, the Bible said, whatever you bless, God said, whatever you bless, I'll bless and you keep lying and denying you are blessing that thing. Whatever it is about us that we don't like, if somebody touch on it, we blow up like we're about, like an ink pen about to expose somebody. Whenever we somebody touch on something that we don't like, something that, that offends us, rather than understand it could be a spirit behind it, we blow up. No, we need to understand that we don't have to submit to things that are supposed to submit to us. Amen. You don't have to live a life controlled by devils, demons, alcohol demons, lust demons, every kind of spirit there, heart attack demons, every kind of spirit there is is attacking people that we know. Why do you think that we have to pray? Well, how do you pray? You can't pray for God to do something that he gave you control over. So God is not going to come down here and lay hands on the sick. You got to do that. Amen. And then you can decree a thing. Saints don't even know they can decree a thing. The Bible says Jesus was given a name over every name. A name above every name. Let me tell you the kind of control Look, all principalities, he's, look, Jesus had headship. The, the Jesus that man refused to acknowledge, the Jesus that man don't even want, the Jesus that our kids grow out of and don't want again until they got their own family in life, be, beating them down, and then they want, they want some help. Guess what? You, if long as you're Jesus, they won't never need him. But this Jesus is all, he has control, all principalities are under him. All power has been given to him. That's Ephesians 1, 21. All might, Ephesians 
1.21. All might, all dominion, all dominion's been given to him. Every name, every name that is named is under him. This world is at his disposal. The world to come, he will still be a force in the world to come. So you tell me about the pandemic, you better tell me about Jesus. Amen. You tell me about an epidemic, you better understand that God will bring us through every situation. All you got to do is hold on and understand that some of the things we're fighting are things that invade our bodies. Invade our bodies. And when you get rid of that spirit, I guarantee you, you will get rid of the appetite. You got to look at it this way. If Jesus can curse a fig tree and he gave you authority over all things, you can curse some of that, them ill wills and spirits that's trying to cause you to take nothing but medication day and night because it wants to. The doctor said, well, this is rheumatoid, all right. He got a name for everything he can't see. Amen. He ain't never seen arthritis, but he can tell you what it is. Mm -hmm. He ain't never seen none of these things. Every name. The world, Ephesians 1, 21, the world to come is under his control, under his headship. The world to come, all things, the church, every person, uh, the people, Isaiah 55 and 4, all things are uh, controlled by him and under him. So what I want to say to our listeners out there, especially young people, if you want to try something, you need to try Jesus because sooner or later, not only this, the only way you will leave this world with any peace and any victory is in Christ Jesus, period. That's the only way to do it. Jesus is what is the uh, Son of God, the man that came into the world that paid the price that no man can pay, which is dying for man's sin. Not only that, he gave us authority over these demon spirits that invade our body, kill our children, our schools, take over our neighborhoods. We lie to ourselves as if we can't do anything. We got the worst neighborhoods, all kinds of people running the neighborhoods, going down and down and down. And they want to make you think it's somebody else's fault, but I just can't go along with that. I could I stayed in the army for 26 years. If I wouldn't have survived, I just thought it was somebody else's fault. When we found somebody at fault, we knew what to do with it. We had an M16, we had a C130 or C141, and we made a night jump. We invaded their territory, and that's what the church is for. Do we've got to go in and invade? We all got. Uh, uh, night gear on. We all ha had about 300 pounds on. You don't jump out no parrot. You don't jump out no aircraft. Uh, if you weigh 130 pounds or 40 pounds, you don't jump. You got another 140 pounds on your body. And when you jump out and, and, and you get your knees and breathe, yeah, you got a, a, your gear goes with you. And that's another 140 pounds that goes with you. When you jump out, you jump out with it. And then you got a you got to survive on the battlefield, and you got to survive in Satan's territory. Well, the church is, has not done that well uh, as far as uh, understanding the mission. We need to understand that we have authority over these spirits, that we can bless people. One thing I can say about the church, they know how to bless. They God bless you. They, they, ooh, they do some blessing, and that is great. They bless you. Most Christians got to very sweet smile and a nice blessing. You'd be surprised how many how much good you do people when you when you bless them. Even the waitresses when you're in the restaurant have a blessed day. At least they haven't cut that out yet. But that'll make some people mad yeah. because some people don't even want you to use God's name in any kind of way that would glorify who God is. But Satan cannot defeat God. He already got an ending date. He's got a date to be reckoned with. That's why they told Christ, have you come to torment us before our time? Well, here's what I'm going to tell you. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you've been through, if you're still on the planet, you still got time. You, and our people are destroyed by what? A lack of knowledge. And one thing else you got to understand is that 
in order to go forth, I never uh, thought that I would try and go forth uh, if things wasn't, you know, going the way I wanted them to go. Because I was just like, if it ain't going my way, I'm quitting. But in this uh, <laughs> this job I got now, I didn't elect to be hired. I didn't. I don't want to elect to be fired. <laughs> you know what I mean? Amen. So, uh, so we're gonna ask you to stand on your feet, and we're gonna have a. A prayer for those that's watching us, Father. We do praise you, honor you. We bless those that's hearing this voice. We bind every demon spirit, every curse we break it in the name of Jesus. Every diabolical scheme, every evil act, we break it down to ten generations. God, we bless the hearers of the message that they may uh, be able to receive the word. Uh, 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 that Jesus Christ the Lord, they may be saved, they may come from, be translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Those that's already saved, God, we bless them where we call for financial blessings and we bind the spirit of lack and poverty, which is a curse. We bind the spirit of sickness in the name of Jesus, which is another curse. We bind every demonic scheme of the enemy come against a lie for the lie is perpetrating all day long and causing families to be divided and causing nations to be to fail because of people father not understanding what truth is and god i thank you for jesus christ being the way the truth and the life and we do praise you honor you glorify you let us know uh with a comment if you like this message Amen, amen, amen. And by the way, we did make take open offerings. So if you want to send something, we do have a cash app on uh, on that, and we would appreciate it. Thank you.